Hello guys, today we're going to discuss efficient market hypothesis and behavioral finance. These are two issues that is currently debated among a lot of practitioners, a lot of academics. And the reason why we need to learn this is basically because we want to know uh, whether the share price in the market reflect the value of the company and um, how can we take advantage in trading shares and what kind of trading strategy should we use if we want to trade shares in the market but basically this is just example of the question that could be answered by learning efficient market hypothesis of course there are a lot of other possible reason now before we go on we have to also understand when we're talking about efficiency what are we talking about whether it is business efficient no operational efficiency of course not we're talking about information efficiency we're talking about how fast the share price in the market reflect the new information. How reliable is the share market price in reflecting the situation of the company? That is basically the efficiency that we talk. How fast if the company if a company announces new information, how fast it will reach the investor and how fast investor will react. Now that's what we want to measure in the efficient market hypothesis. Now when we're talking about efficient market hypothesis, we're basically assuming that it is a strong form of market efficiency. Later on, in the efficient market category, I will explain more details about this. Now basically, efficient market hypothesis believe that share price in a market reflect all available, whether it is public or private information. So, investor will not be able to take any advantage in form of normal return on a regular basis by using a private information. And this is because once the information hit the market, the share price reactions is instantaneous and unbiased. So the share price, the, so there's close possibility for people to take advantage on using any information. Now, the behavioral finance is actually on the other, uh, on the other sides of the extreme. These people believe that investors does not always rational Investor uh, could react different ways. Investor could have different ways in perceiving information. Thus, one information, whether it's good or bad, could be perceived differently. And behavioral finance believe that market is not efficient and should not be expected to be efficient. Thus, if we go back to the questions that we have arised before, how do people who believe efficient market hypothesis will answer? First, to the first question, is the market price reflect the value of the company? Well, those people will answer yes, because basically uh, the, the market price uh, of the shares actually already incorporated all information, so it can reflect the value of the company. Well, how can we take advantage in trading shares? On the second question, basically they would say, no, you cannot take advantage in trading shares using public or private information because if you want to use that the it will be too late because the market actually already incorporate that information now what kind of trading strategies should we use well efficient market hypothesis people will basically suggest you to buy the share and hold it in the long run now what about the behavioral finance answered now toward the first question they will likely say no because basically the the uh, well, it could be yes or no, but basically the share price does not always uh, reflect the value of the company. Some people, some in some time period, investor could be very irrational, especially in perceiving information. They could be biased in overreacting. Sometimes they buy even uh, they perceive the company in a val they value the company even higher than its fundamental value. And uh, on answering the second question, how can they take advantage in trading shares? Of course, by seeking for private information. By seeking private information and using them in the market, you can have a, uh, a, an abnormal return. Now, the problem is they're not really suggesting you to seek for private information because it could be illegal. And um, what they basically say that it is possible now, what kind of trading strategies should we use? Well, it's the simple rule is that uh, you could find for the information and take benefit of it. 
but basically what they're saying is we could seek for the abnormal return now the second part uh, I'm going to try to share my perceptions on market efficiency now what is actually the category of market efficiency now thanks to Eugene Fama the efficiency of the market is actually could be divided into three part first is the weak efficiency second is that some is strong efficiency and strong form efficiency now this three character of market is characterized by the type of information incorporated the share price in the weak efficiency we can understand that the share price is actually incorporated past information in the semi strong the share price incorporated past and current information but in strong form as we have already discussed before it incorporates all information past current and private information but Yes, to determine this, we have to have our own market value of a company so we can decide how actually market react. Now, to explain this further, I will use example. Now, let's say that in January 1st, 2010, the company A value under you know, the value of the company is $60 million. We can calculate this under any sophisticated financial calculations, whether it is discounted cash flow, CAPM, or any other tools. And it's resulted in $60 million. And the share standing is $1 million, so the share price then should be $10 per share. Now, let's just assume that the share price in the market is indeed $10 per share on January 1st, 2010. So, if you want to make it simple, on this paragraph, I just basically say the share market price is $10 per share on the 1st of January. Now, on the March of the 1st of March in 2010, the company A got new project. That will increase its profit this project is v so valuable that it's expected to raise the company's value by say 10 percent now this is private information on march on the first 2010 because the private the company is actually announced to the public on the next day on the march 2nd now to determine whether the market is actually weak semi-strong or strong we could le look at the re reactions towards this uh, case study what if the what is actually the weak efficiency? Let's recall that weak efficiency market is actually when the share price traded in the market currently contain past information. Well, how long does it uh when you call past? Is it month ago, a year ago? Well, it depends. Some uh, some people believe that even three days ago, it's quite it's called past. So, uh, it's subject to uh, empirical study. Now let's look at the example case. We bl uh, the we the last time we understand that on March one two thousand and ten they got the news and what is actually the share price? What happened with the share price on the first of March? Um, no, there will be no response to the to the uh, news. The share price will not move. And um, what about in the second when the announce announcement date? Yes, the share price is not going to move because of what? Well, maybe because investors do not do not receive the information by you know uh, in any ways because this is actually a theoretical. It's very hard to be imagine this situation now. But let's say in nineteen twenties when share markets when information is not like now readily available through internet when the information itself does not reach the investors, so investors not reacting. That's when capital market is weak in its efficiency. Now, what about the long run? Well, probably in the long run, the price will go up, up to 10%, but it takes time. Now, the length of the time, that's determined the weak efficiency of the market. Now, what about the same as strong efficiency? Now, we recall that the price traded, it's containing all current information and past information. So if we call back to the case example, when the company announced the um, the good news in March second, the second the share price will increase by ten percent, but on March first, the share price is not moving. So the market react on the public information, which means that investors has access to public information, and um, the investors also could react uh, in some sort of instantaneous and unbiased.
it could be that way or it probably less than it takes time but really not that long that's probably for semi strong efficiency now in the strong market efficiency this is also more uh, theoretical when price traded contain all public and private information if we take a look back at the case example the share price will react on the march of 1st although it is still private information the company does not announce anything the share price increased by 10 percent now the conclusion is actually in the strong market efficiency somehow this private information found its way to investor instantaneously and investor can really absorb the information and reevaluate the impact and somehow change the bid and offer in the market so they're no longer going to sell the price for uh, $10 they're going to increase it by 10% so basically that's the difference between weak semi-strong and strong market efficiency hope you all enjoy